This conference will now be recorded. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Uh, in the name of Allah, we'll start um, a session about preparation for MRS regime part three. Uh, first, I want um, uh, to say congratulations for all who passed MRS regime part two uh, exam, and all the best for who didn't pass. I'm sure that you will pass very soon, and you will join us for preparation for part three, inshallah. Um, before we start the um, session about preparation, because I know that you have frequent questions you want to ask about um, part three. Um, and before starting, there is some information. About uh, myself. Um, just as I um, start conducting the free courses for MRCG Part 2 uh, since September 2017. And also I am conducting uh, courses for MRCG Part 3 since July 2018. Um, I'm an instructor for MRCG for hundreds of students for MRCG Part 3 since July 2018. Um, and this is, was my life circuit in, uh, in Egypt. I um, conducted two circuits, one circuit in Cairo, August 2019, and another one in Dubai in September 2019. Just I will share with you some uh, pictures from the Cairo circuit. This is the first um, circuit in Cairo. This is my first circuit, August 2019. Great monitors for MR surgery part two and the examiner. Unique your role players. This is all pictures from the task inside the circuits in Gairo. Uh, the second circuit was in Dubai, September 2019. This is also picture from Dubai um, circuit. I try to make it similar to the exam situation. Um, the examiner was uh, where the examiners were uh, unique. Uh, they are a great monitors for um, uh, MRCG. They are well trained, also examiners, and also the role players, really, they were unique. All this from the Dubai circuit, September 2019. Uh, there is, was a plan for another two circuits, one in Cairo in April 2020 and another one in Dubai in April 2020, but both circuits were cancelled because of coronavirus pandemic. Um, now we will move to the session of today about preparation for MRCG Part 3. Uh, I know that you have frequent questions but be careful, this is the most important uh, stage, um, session about preparation. Why? Because if you start in the correct way, you will not waste time during your preparation. MRCG part two, more difficult than part three. More difficult, so you finish the difficult part. Part three, more easier. Just you need to concentrate well how you will start to prepare yourself for the exam. So what is the questions I know you want to ask? 
how to pass from the first attempt, why candidates fail in the exam before, how much time I need to prepare, what to study, what are the books I should study, what, which online courses I should book or attend, which life circuits I should attend, what is the benefit from the online courses or live courses, and is the exam booking for the exam difficult? I think it's impossible now. I should change the. There is any possibility to book the exam? Now it's um, much, much difficult because of coronavirus pandemic. It's become very, very difficult now because there is no exam for part three, but they will conduct uh, uh, part three for UK trainee in November, uh, in the next few days, and we will talk about this point also, how will be the exam. How much pass mark is this also one question you want to know. <clears throat> we will talk about exam before coronavirus pandemic. Why? Because the exam now different. You don't know which type of uh, exam you will take, this one or the ones you will do in next November. What is the way? You should know both. You should know both because you don't know what is which type of the exam you will set. Before before coronavirus, there is will be circuits like number circuit number uh, circuit A, circuit B, circuit C, circuit D, and they will send you email that your exam in this day because the exam sometimes it can be two days, three days, four days. So they will tell you your exam in day one, and you are in uh, number is D five, for example. So your circuit will be circuit D and your number is five. This means that the first task you will start will start task number five. After five in the exam, you will need to move to circuit to uh, next to cubicle six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Then you will start again one, two, three, four. So the last task you will finish, it will be number four. Um, they will test you about 14 um, tasks in each task covering certain module, like teaching module, core surgical skills, post-operative care, antenatal care, maternal medicine, management of labor, management of delivery, postpartum problems, gynecology problems, Subfertility, sexual and reproductive health, early pregnancy care, gynecology, oncology, urogynecology, and the pelvic floor problems. So each circuit, each each uh, each of this um, station, you will need to stand outside the cubicle two minutes. They will put frequent papers outside. And this is the first point you need to read. You need to read fast. Why? Because you bought sometimes three papers, sometimes four papers. And if you ask who attended the exam before, he will tell, uh, sometimes I can't finish all the papers. I miss some important information, and this is could affect the mark. So from today until the day of the exam, you need to read fast. If you see any task, check. Uh, within how much time you finish. Within one minute, you can finish because in the exam, it's two minutes, including your movement from one cubicle to other cubicle. So the two minutes include this movement until you reach to the paper and you will start to read. So two minutes outside, 10 minutes inside with the examiner and the rule player or with the examiner alone. Then you need to move outside again two minutes in the next cubicle, 10 minutes then again, two minutes out, 10 minutes inside until you finish all the 14 uh, tasks. Um, it's about three hours, long time, long, and you'll, you'll be exhausted. You also want to test your ability. If you are busy in your daily life, still you can continue or no. Three hours of continuous moving from one stress to another stress, stress, stress. Uh, so it's three hours. Um, uh, the exam. At morning and afternoon. So maybe you are at morning and your friend will be afternoon. The task will be similar. Like and at morning, they bring a task about Graves' disease. Afternoon, it will be same, the same task. But from day to other day, day one, day two, day three, day four, the task will be different. They will bring other uh, cases, scenarios. Uh, one time, the only happen. One time, the only happen. 
in, two, in my exam in 2018, May 2018. Day one, I was in day one. My exam was in day one. Next day, they put all the same cases. The same cases will, will serve, but I think they will not repeat it again. So be careful. I think it will not happen again. But the scenarios from uh, as usual, usually it will be different from one day to other days. <laughs> so you are now moving, correct? You have few, uh, a 14 a cubicle. You need to move the organ, even the, there will be their uh, instructors, they will tell you how to go from one room. They are sit, standing there to help you. Sometimes you are confused in which direction you are going. So there's your guide, you move to this next, the next, so you will not lose the way. Even you know the one person bef before you and after you, you are moving, uh, they are moving with you. But now in the next exam uh, for uh, UK trainee, they planned to uh, not no movement for any candidate. You will sit only on a chair because of the coronavirus, and they wanted to conduct MR surgery part three exam. And since 2020, there is no any exam at all. The only the next one will be for UK trainee. This is my expectation. This is my expectation. This is just a picture. This is just a picture from Google. But I'm. This is my expectation. They mentioned that they, it will be uh, the candidate only. He will sit on a chair. He will not move. You will not move from one cubicle to other cubicle, from one cubicle to other cubicle. No, just you will sit. So two minutes start the bizarre sound. You the papers will appear in the screen in front of you, like in the picture here, and you will start to read. And after this, the examiner and rule player will appear and they will start to talk to you. After finish the first, second task, the second task will appear, third, fourth, fifth until you finish the while you are sitting only in the same place three hours three hours just as you wanted to limit the uh, infection because of coronavirus so which type of exam you will uh, take this one or this one i think they are trying this one because the waiting list of four candidates for mr so part three i think now huge number so i think they will start to conduct by this way and they will see if they will do in offer in uh, for the other overseas or not so let's let's see what will happen in the next exam but this is the difference between the part three exam before and what will be the plan for november it will be after a few days from now so you will see the examiner and rule player through uh, the screen uh, when you reach to the exam um, area they will give you um, uh, your number a badge is the number is there and your name is there and after finish you will return back to uh, them so you will not forget you will not forget so i will start now how i will uh, i uh, how will be the exam they will give me um, a note with frequent papers with frequent papers and pencil and you need to use this every task you need to use one paper new paper after you finish use another new paper don't don't write in the same paper frequent task because Maybe you will confuse between the information you are writing in the paper for different tasks. So each task, you need to use only one paper. And it's enough, frequent of papers. Don't worry, much papers you are given. Um, after you finish the exam, uh, there is someone will waiting you outside. They just standing to take this paper. From every candidate, he will move outside. He will. So what is the benefit? This is expensive? No, not expensive. But they know if every candidate share one information from this paper, this is the exam because I will write the most important point in this task. So before you are going outside, they will take this paper from you. Uh, and even you depend on your memory, with the time your memory, you will not remember much. You could remember something and even now there is uh, uh, much um, uh, instruction regarding uh, sharing the recalls and also you will sign consent that you will not share any questions about the exam. Uh, so you will now the, in front of the screen for November for who will sit in November, the, you will see the task in front of you. You have the paper with you and the pen and you need to write the main points. Don't write the instruction given in the task. Like he will tell you, this is patient, the primary gravity, 25 years. You will not write every word that you read. No, there is no time for this. No time for this. You need to read fast. What is the most important point? 
in the papers in front of you. And this is need much practice, much practice. Um, and also one of the uh, uh, important point in the live circuit that you need to practice this way when you are in front of the cubicle, you are see papers and you need to read. And what is the main point is you need to read in the put in the paper. Um, sometimes you put very long papers, very long informations. You uh, two minutes if you wanted to read, can't do without five minutes. So you need to be fast. What is the most um, like? Like for example, for example, they give you histopathology paper, histopathology and um, everything up, up, up papers, informations, information. You no need to read everything. Just need in the end. What is the conclusion? What is the conclusion? What is the in the ultrasound? He give you much details, clinical data, cephalic. Uh, what is the diagnosis? In the end, this will be only one sentence. Just read this sentence because if you read all the paper from up to down, some candidates fail in the exam before because they can't finish within two minutes. They can't finish, and some failed because missed the information. For example, for example, he bought for you long scenario about one patient with lichen sclerosis. Okay. And the patient visited her um, doctor, dermatology, and frequent times prescribed treatment. And you are planning that this is a patient of lichen sclerosis, okay? And patient, in the end, there is one paper, histopathology. There is histopathology. And this histopathology includes that this patient, when they take biopsy from her, this is a Dr. Sumita, can you mute yourself, please? Um, please, if possible, you mute yourself uh, during the session. Okay, so uh, if you are planning, I'm planning now, this is a case of lichen sclerosis. After some times, I, I don't recognize that there is histopathology and this case a VIN. So if you are going inside the cubicle, you lost most of the task because you are talking about one case. But already he gave you that already diagnosed as a case of VIM. So be careful, just some informations, you could, could change all the tasks. So you are planning to do some tasks. One task, for example, for example, one task is you are giving huge of papers, patient is seeking for fertility, she wants to have a child um, since a long time, since two months, uh, two, two years, and um, as you try to do for her ultrasound scans, a transvaginal, she can't tolerate. She, and you are thinking that this is a scenario of infertility, and you are thinking about um, semen analysis of the husband tubes, her tubes here. And if you if you be concentrate well, there is one information that the patient can't tolerate the transvaginal ultrasound. She can't tolerate the transvaginal ultrasound. And if you ask the patient from the start about this information why she can't tolerate the ultrasound. <coughs> so what about the sexual intercourse? Uh, no sexual intercourse. No, no sexual intercourse. No, no sexual intercourse, doctor. Uh, how? She is coming before infertility and she is don't have, so this is not a scenario of infertility because infertility at least one year unprotected sexual intercourse. So if there is no sexual intercourse, so this is not a scenario of infertility. This is a scenario different scenario. So no sex, no penetration, no penetration. Why? She is, I'm fearing the doctor from sexual intercourse. I'm closing my size. So this is a case of vaginismus. So you are planning that this is a case of infertility and this is a different scenario. So you should concentrate well. They are, they are concentrated in this point that you can't read fast. And if you can't read fast, this is something that can affect the patient's safety because in your daily life, you can have frequent number of patients. So if you can't manage the patient while there is much patient there, so you are unsafe doctor. So you need to read fast. You need to concentrate well in every information there because if you miss important information, you will not pass in the exam. Um, so the first important now, what is the first important point? The first two minutes, there is, will be um, a, a huge numbers of papers um, in, in one exam in the labor prioritization, because the labor, uh, this is just not joke, but this is, <laughs> this is heaven. Um, we are going and see the, the papers in the wall, okay, in the wall. 
and and when they move to the cubicle, there is no paper in the wall. Okay, where is the paper? <laughs> it's the, where is the paper? Okay, because the paper was very long, very long paper, labor prioritization. It was on the floor. Uh, so sometimes until you search where is the paper, so be careful. If you didn't um, don't find the paper on the wall, just to check it down. They bought for every candidate very long paper because there is, uh, was a scenarios about labor prioritization was long. So until you search, two minutes finish. If I search for where is the paper, if I find the paper, I will do everything what I can't find. So just save your time because it's only two minutes. There is histopathology. Be careful about the final diagnosis. Ultrasound to concentrate well in the last line. What is the diagnosis? Don't waste your time to read every details up because sometimes it will waste your time without any value. In the test, they will give you investigation about 20 investigations. 20, yes, 20 investigations. I will read 20 investigations. It will be difficult, but you should practice and you should be also practice much, much scenario. If you practice much scenario, you can recognize the most important points in any OSCE exam, either MRCG, MRCBI, any OSCE exam. Um, I will tell some, like for example, for example, he is putting one scenario, long scenario about one patient to come for antenatal care. Um, some he giving you some problem regarding this patient, and he put down small lines that this patient she is a heavy smoker, about 20 cigarettes per day. Uh, there is another scenario. What is the line? What this line mean? What this line mean? Anyone know what this line? If you are in outside the cubicle and you see one patient with um, a, a, a very long scenario, and in the end, he put, she is a smoker. I think part two, part two now, they are fresh knowledge. So if they put in one patient, smoker more than 11, so this patient, she will need to cross scan. She will need, because this is one major risk factor. This is kind of a structural discussion. The examiner will ask you, you will give plan because you are putting two problems. Sometimes you are putting two problems, and you are concentrated in the main problems, and you not noted that this patient, she is, a heavy smoker, more than 11 cigarettes per day, and this patient will need gross scan. One patient, ectopic pregnancy, and she come today for um, uh, nausea management for her. So uh, knowledge is very important part for part three. Not the main point in part three, but very important to pass. Because if I see one patient, she come for ectopic. I, if I don't know when I will offer her expectant, when I will offer her medical, when I will offer her surgical, so how I will, so how I will uh, manage the patient. Okay. In in the papers outside, I will write, I will write just the important points for me. Like I see one scenario, like I mentioned now, the one with heavy smoker, I will write gross scan. I will not write 11 cigarettes. Be careful. Be careful what I will write. This is and write with good handwriting. Uh, for me, for me, sometimes I'm sometimes when I'm busy, I write with bad handwriting. When I come next day, I try to read what what I nothing. I can't read. What is this? And this is my handwriting. So no time, no time to look and uh, concentrate. Where is the paper? Make it small and large. Small uh, mean concise. I want to write concise thing and large so you can see easily. So if you see a um, patient with a heavy smoker, you will write gross scan. One patient bleeding in early pregnancy, blood group, folic acid. So this is some points I will remember. So don't write the instruction given to you, just write what is the point is you should remember inside the cup. Be careful what is the diagnosis, be careful because there is some word that's going to change the diagnosis for the patient, as I mentioned. What is the, what is the scenario you will face? Either structure discussion, and it's easy. You will see only one examiner inside. One examiner inside, so he will ask you about any scenario. For example, maternal collapse. Um, uh, is there is two persons inside, so one person will be the role player, and the other person will be the uh, examiner. I, I want to ask me before, how I will know who is the examiner and who, <laughs> you will know, <laughs> easy, just to go and sit, the chair will be in front of the role players and the role player will start to smile and she will, the other one, she will have um, a large note with her, she is writing in it. So it's uh, not something, uh, no one ask about this point, but um, uh, there is no one, um, one only ask about this point, but 
it's easy to recognize who is examiner from the role player, especially if they are females. If you see three persons on site, so this is, will be the simulated patient task with layman examiner, and we will discuss uh, about each task from this. This is the three different types of task you will. The highest mark is this one. This is the highest mark. Uh, so the first one, this is the examiner. So you have only one person inside. This is one person. So by logic, if you enter the cubicle, you will greet him. I greet him. Um, avoid good morning or good afternoon. Why? Why? I will tell you. Because in this day, when you will uh, sit for the exam, this is really a very stressful day for you. Very stressful. And you don't know you, you are morning or afternoon except just maybe one month before the exam. And when you are practice with your partner, study partner, you are talking to him, good, uh, good morning, good morning, good morning. So if your exam, afternoon, and you are practice, usually good morning, good morning. So when you enter and you will tell the examiner good morning and you are afternoon. So this is, will be not a good start. Yeah. So just then, so just set hello, hello, doctor, and sit. And wait until the examiner asks you. So you will greet the examiner only in this task. Only because he is the only person inside. Otherwise, don't, don't greet the examiners at all, at all in the stimulated patient task. Only greet your patient. Uh, he will ask you about uh, this is uh, any task, any task, uh, recurrent miscarriage. Tell me what is the um, um, causes of recurrent miscarriage management. Inside the cubicle, he can give you more data. More data how? Um, uh, I will tell you, like, um, um, uh, any scenario about um, anything you don't know, and this patient she has irregular breathing, and the examiner tells you this is the histopathology of this patient, and he will give you one paper, and this paper is only histopathology. There is nothing there, and you don't know. You don't know really. You don't know what is this. And he asks you, this is the histopathology of the patient. This is endometrial sample taken from the patient. What is your diagnosis? And you look. You don't know. If you don't know, tell him I don't know. I don't know, don't waste your time. Just think for a while. If you don't know, because the examiner, if you keep silent, he will think that you are thinking. So if you don't know, so just he will give you zero in this question and he will tell you what is the diagnosis because how he will continue the task. He will disclose the answer. So he can ask, ask the other questions, but you uh, take zero in this question. Uh, then he, okay, okay, so this is a case of chronic endometritis. Okay, so he takes the paper. Okay, this is another um, cell, okay, we see in the uh, chronic endometritis. Take this paper, what is this? Uh, so <laughs> I don't know, I don't know where is the paper, so how I will know? So it's a plasma cell. So be careful, he can give you, this is just for joke. So it, if something difficult, difficult, if I don't know the first paper, how I will know the second one? So it's difficult, but Chronic endometritis, this is important, it has to pathology, just to be familiar with it. Plasma cell, also this is specific for chronic endometritis. Have a look to it and you should know because you can have a question like this in the exam. Um, after this, he will ask you a question and be careful, be careful before you answer. He will ask you any question. So if you know the question by your heart, don't rush and answer. Think first, think first for two, um, uh, because of two points. First point is confirm that you answer correct. Second point, show the examiner that you are a wise doctor. You are not doing anything before you are thinking. Okay. Um, okay, for example, he he asks you, you are you are going, you are waiting in the your delivery room in the hospital uh, while you are walking, you see one patient falling in the floor. What is your immediate action? If you rush for the answer, if uh, what is the answer? What is uh, anyone knows the answer? Uh, what what is the answer? Anyone there? No one is here. Call for help. Call for help. No, not call for help. Okay. So we need we need first to to, to think what what he want. He asks what is the immediate action. If I am calling for help. This means that I am uh, could all the stuff come and this patient should not have any problem. So the first point I need to confirm the safe environment. What? Uh, 
safe environment, safe environment because maybe she fall because of electricity. So this is unsafe. If I go, I will, there is only not two victim. It will be not one victim, it will be two. So I should confirm first safety environment before I approach to this patient. After this, I will check the response. You, you can imagine this is the answer of the question. This is the answer of the question. Check the response. How you check the response? Are you okay? Are you okay? And I will check the patient's shoulder. She will tell, yes, doctor, I'm just a drowsy. Okay, so why I will call for help? Now, now just anyone in the staff, we can help this patient. So the first point, don't answer the idea. Don't answer any question before you think, is the correct, this is the correct answer. And this is very simple, very simple question. But still you can fail in the question and you take, can take zero. Um, listen carefully, what is the examiner want from you? If you don't any question, just to tell I don't know, don't show him that you are unsafe doctor. If in the end you finish, sometimes you can finish the task two minutes early. If you remember certain informations, you are confirmed, you just, doctor, I remember now this information, can I share, can I um, uh, talk about it? Yes, yes, you can talk. He will give you and you can talk about if you if you remember something, don't discuss with him, doctor, my performance was good. My performance was, was bad. I, I feel doctor or no. <laughs> don't don't ask him like these questions. My logic. Don't be uh, just just be calm, just be silent, don't discuss the mark at all, at all with the examiner. Uh, you will use jargon, not logic. I will talk to a doctor and I will uh, use layman. So be careful. You are using here jargon. You will not use the layman language uh, for, like the patient, the like in the root layer. Okay, we'll move to the next one, the patient. Here, don't greet the examiner. If, if possible, if possible, you uh, don't look to his face at all. Sometimes you can see the face when you are enter the clinic as a cubicle. If possible, you, you, you can't look to him at all, do it. Don't look to him at all. He is absent, he is not there. He wanted to mark you. When you are seeing one patient in your clinic, how you are going to, to deal with your patient? So he is not there. Just he wanted to assess your performance with your patient. So if you greet him, no value. You are wasting time. Uh, even this is will not get good impression. So if you have one patient, your patient waiting, you will greet another one. You will greet your patient as the one waiting you inside. So you will greet her uh, when you are enter. Someone ask me, uh, so it will take time. I will until I enter the uh, cubicle. No, it will not take time because now because the numbers of the candidates increasing, the 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 distance even between the papers of outside the cubicle until the chair maybe half meter, very very short because. Because the number increasing, so the decrease increasing is the number of the circuits. So this is makes the space less. Uh, so you are going inside, you will greet her uh, and sit on the chair. Um, a nice smile, but but you will not smile while you are going to tell one patient about bulb cancer, uh, chemotherapy. So uh, <laughs> you are going and I'm smiling, but how are you? No, this is not logic. Not logic. So you are just uh, greeting the patient. If this is um, a case of cancer or big bad news, try to uh, not smile at all. Just be natural uh, to avoid because this will be a give a bad impression about you. So I, how I will know that this is role player task is that two patients inside, two patients, two uh, two persons inside. So the examiner, the clinical examiner, and the uh, role players, the patient, and this is not a patient. MRCBI OSCE, uh, the exam on real patients in the hospitals. Who, uh, if anyone preparing for MRCBI, the, you will take the exam on real patients. But in MRCG, this is rule players. She is not a real patient. I, I will examine the patient. No, you will not examine the patient. But if there is no examination in the papers outside, and this patient need examination, just you will offer her, offer, offer, like I, I need to examine you in the presence of Sharpro if you don't mind. So just you will offer, and she can agree or not agree, but there is no, no, no examination at all in the exam. No examination, just by talking, by talking only. Uh, if the role player asks one question and you answer her, 
you answer her. And again, she repeats the questions. Again, she repeats the question. So if she repeats the question, so maybe your answer, she needs specific answer. So again, revise maybe there is certain points. Like, for example, for example, um, um, uh, one patient octopic pregnancy, octopic pregnancy, and there's a data given to you that you can do for her chemotherapy, uh, or or surgery, both options you can for the patient. And she tell you, no, 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 I I don't want, I I don't want surgery. I want to only chemotherapy doctor. So the okay, anyone will tell, okay, so no any problem, I will take chemotherapy only. So if if she repeats certain information, so she, you need to confirm again. So if she re refused chemotherapy, yes, this is her right. But very important the question and the try to put in the paper in the start of the exam, because this question usually you will forget the word why. Put this word in the uh, above when you start the exam, because usually this is question you will forget to ask. One patient, she will get, I don't want a chemotherapy doctor. Why? Because this is will um, patient will disclose certain important information in the management of her. So you ask her why? Why you refuse chemotherapy? Why you refuse surgery? Why you refuse sorry? Why you refuse surgery? Because there is one patient could refuse chemotherapy, one patient will refuse surgery. So whatever she refuses, you will ask her why. So for example, the patient for ectopic pregnancy, she tell you, I I want the chemotherapy, but I don't want surgery. So why you don't want surgery? Why? Any specific concern? Yes, yes, I, my uh, friend, she had the same surgery before and she had tear in the bladder. So this is, uh, first you will tell her, I'm really sorry to hear about what happened to your friend, but let me explain for you more. Yes, we can give you chemotherapy. This is your right, but you should know that there is possibility of surgery in about 7% of the woman. So I will give you, why, why you inform her? Because she is thinking that only the chemotherapy will be the treatment and she will not need any, any, any surgery. No, still she will need and you should inform her and this is her right. So I agree with you, we can give you chemotherapy, but you should know that there is risk of surgery in about 7%. So this is answer. Answer the patient the question. One patient with cancer. Uh, surgery, a hair treatment surgery, or chemotherapy. I don't want chemotherapy. Why, why you don't want chemotherapy? This question is very important and very vital. She will tell because I, I don't want my hair to fall. So any, uh, okay, yes, I appreciate your concern, but there is options also to decrease the risk for your hair to fall, like calling a cab, you can cut your hair before the chemotherapy, you can use big hair, it can be a natural hair, this is, will be expensive and you will buy, or it can be funded, since it is a one um, not natural, you can, it will be covered by National Health Service. So when you ask this question, why? Uh, one patient planned for hysterectomy, planned for hysterectomy and keeping the ovaries. And ready for the surgery. And she come today, she tell, no, 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 I, I, I wanted to remove my ovaries. So why? So the question, why? This is a question usually you will forget the exam. Even I mention, you will forget. If anyone remember, it will be few only. Few only numbers will remember these questions. And this is the problem because there is, will be very important, very important information. The rule player, she will inform you if you ask this question. Rule player, she can be angry, she can be sad according to the scenario. And this is need a uh, discussion regarding how you are going to take bad news, how to deal with the angry patients. This is also very important. <laughs> um, a role player with um, layman, there is two examiner inside. The first one is a clinical examiner, and the other one will be layman examiner. Uh, is a good point in this task, this is the highest mark in the exam. And the good point is that everyone will mark you separately. So a clinical examiner will give you a mark in information gathering, in applied knowledge, communication with the college, safety, and also the layman will give you mark. But he will not, they will not discuss with each other how much you give him in safety two or one. No. Everyone, and this is excellent, very, very excellent point. 
very excellent. No one will affect the opinion of other. This is very excellent point. The layman can mark you in information gathering, in communication with the patient, and safety. So the mark can reach to 14. So very high mark. It will be about four tasks in the exam. When you see there is three persons inside, don't also be panicked. Don't worry. Don't worry. Just deal as the other's task. Don't worry because it's the highest or no. Just deal in uh, calm and be confident and you will still, you will pass. Uh, clinical layman, this is, um, they are from general public. They don't have any clinical training about uh, background medical, not, they are not doctors. But they can, as they will have um, uh, training how to assist you in the exam. So we have a structured discussion, about four, sometimes increasing. Sometimes it can be five, sometimes it can be six, but it's usually four. Layman, uh, estimated patient task with layman four, and estimated patient uh, task, it will be about six stations. So total will be uh, 14. Uh, in the end of the paper, when you are seeing the paper outside, in the end, they will put the domain. Domain, they will put, um, uh, they will test you inside, they will mark, so you will know the mark. Uh, in patient safety, communication with the patient and relatives, communication with the college, information gathering, applied knowledge. Sometimes it can be three domains, sometimes it can be four or five. Uh, what is the value? Uh, what, what is the value I will know? The value in, in certain points. If you look, there is information gathering. This means that you need to take history from the patients. There is mark about the history. This is the idea. If there is no information the gathering, so this means that you are going to counsel the patient about the plan of management. So you need to history, history given to you. If there is communication with the colleagues, and usually you will miss this mark. This is very easy mark. If you take uh, history from the patient, it will take about three to four minutes. If you will talk about communication with the college, maybe it will take one minute or less. And the both two mark, two mark and two mark. And what happened, like I saw one scenario about, outside about one patient, I should refer her to urology doctor. I bought a plan, but I didn't, uh, I didn't put it in the paper, so I forget inside. So if I wouldn't, uh, I think that I mentioned, but the examiner uh, don't hear, and you should clarify the points because also it's exhausted. If you are listening to someone continuous, continuous three hours, so try to be concise. Try to be concise to the main points. So I will need to refer you to a urology. Urology. So the examiner hears the urology. Don't uh, crowd it much words, much words, and in the end, the urology it will be something do not appear. Just to concise, I want to from you, Tom, to tell much what word is just to be concise to certain ways. So you need, this patient, you need referral to urology doctor. So you'll take the mark two from two. The urology doctor will be the one to treat her, like urethral diverticulum. So be careful, be careful about communication with the police because usually, usually, like one patient with um, uh, pulmonary hypertension, this patient needs to be involved who you will involve with you this is communication with the college so uh, it could be uh, uh, he could be a urology doctor he could be um, uh, a heart doctor you will refer her to the heart this patient you need involved for uh, other specialty psychiatrist psychology okay so to who you need to involve this patient hematology doctor will be involved and usually it will be very easy mark, but usually some they miss this mark in the exam, and this is could affect uh, their mark. Communication with the college. In the exam, they will uh, give you mark, uh, patient safety, communication with the relatives according to the domain. So they can give you three domains, four domains, and the examiner will have zero, one, and two. Zero if you give little or no relevant input. Uh, sometimes uh, some candidates, because you are not uh, well prepared, you just give irrelevant data, irrelevant, irrelevant, irrelevant. I'm, I'm just talking, I'm giving informations, but all not related to the task, general informations. This is, will be little or what. So be careful. Irrelevant data will waste your time without any benefit. So zero for um, no relevant and what or little. Um, uh, one, if some point this was mentioned, two, it will be the standard. And in the end, they will collect all the mark in all, in all the cubicle, and they will see uh, how much they will pass, the percentage of uh, bus, and after this, you will put the bus mark. A uh, bus mark, it will be about 62. 
this is the last, uh, I think this is the last mark because I think this is November 2001, year before, because there is no exam in this year until now. Information gathering. So what is the uh, information the gathering? Next week, next week, you should prepare one paper and in part three, you will use the paper and then first one week just to practice for the history, organize your history. And, and the second point for the paper, you will write the main point is in the paper for the task. Like I'm outside the cubicle, I will practice to write main words in the paper. And this is very important. When you are practice like in the exam, this is, will help you much. After this week, leave the paper. Don't use any paper except in the start of the task, the two minutes only. Depend on your memory. In part two, I tell them the cornerstone to pass part two, solve the questions as you can. In part three, talk as you can. As possible as you can, talk. Talk and depend on your memory because in the exam, in 10 minutes, there is no time to sit and think. You should recall the information easily. And this is should, um, you should have exercise from now. Exercise to remember the information. So if there is any information you want to remember, don't write it in the paper. Don't write. Because if you write, you will depend that you will bring the paper to read it again. No, I want you to recall it from your memory. I will forget it, no problem. You do your channel in, uh, you, in, uh, in, uh, in, in Telegram, your um, uh, only private channel, only you, you are there. And if you want to remember certain information, don't write it. Just record it in, uh, by voice message in the channel. And you will listen to it again. Listen and talk, listen and talk, listen and talk. Don't write it. If you write it, you will, remember. You will never remember it in the exam. Okay, so uh, how I will pass in information gathering? This is the history. The history. When I am going to talk history from one patient, I will ask her about her history, presenting history. What is her complaint? Obstetric history, gynecology history, medical, surgical. So how I will take the mark? First, this week, you need to organize your history. Your history needed to be organized. You should take relevant history related to the patient. And this is, we need much practice for frequent scenarios. Frequent scenarios, this patient, uh, uh, headache, postpartum, what is the main points I need in the presenting history? This is need much practice. Much, much practice. And you need to have study partner. If you don't have study partner, part three, it will be very difficult, very difficult. So first, you need to organize your history. Start with the presenting history. Not logic one patient to come uh, with complain and you will tell her, uh, ask about the surgical history. Ask first the presenting history. And this is will appear in front of the examiner that you are, you know what is the main point is you need to ask in the presenting history. If you escape, some they are escaping. They don't know. So they will escape to the other general point, this drug allergy, um, uh, medical surgery. They are escaping escaping from the presenting history because you don't know no if you practice well you will know what is the main point in the presenting history so the first one should be presenting history use open questions in the start um for example don't um i am now started to um, ask her about the gynecology and i want history i want to ask about the period her period i will not tell her when the last ministerial period no they will not happy you will tell her can you tell me more about your period so this is open question. She will tell doctors this is um, um, uh, it's okay about every month. It's average amount three uh, days, and uh, last ministerial period was about four weeks before. So you are giving the the um, uh, generally the doctors ask the patient to close the questions because they don't want to them to talk. And the best management for any patient you should tell her let her talk. So if you ask her open question. If she mentioned, she will mention frequent informations. And in the end, if she didn't mention certain informations, you can ask her again, like she didn't uh, tell when the last ministerial period. So you can ask when the last ministerial period. After this, you can ask a closed question. <clears throat> uh, don't ask her about obstetric history, how many children you have. So this is closed question. So this is, will be for, um, I have only four children. But if you ask her, have you ever been pregnant before? So she will tell the doctor, yes, I have three children. I have one ectopic pregnancy and I have one miscarriage. And so she will talk. Open questions and the information gathering, you will start by an open questions. This is, will give very excellent impression about you in front of the examiner. 
Don't repeat the info questions. So how I will not repeat? You will not note that you are repeated. You are not, not noted. Uh, so you will repeat, you will put the, in the paper, the first one presenting history, second, for example, gynecology, third, obstetric, uh, fourth, medical, surgical, drug, drug allergy, for example, contraception, cervical smear. So you are putting a certain uh, uh, um, uh, organization for your history. So if I finish one, I will go to two, three, four. Why is this idea? To avoid repetition. Like I will ask here in the start, you, uh, do you have any drug allergy? No doctor. After some time, do you have a drug allergy? No doctor. After some, do you have drug? So what is this? You are repeating the information and wasting much time. <clears throat> when you start the preparation for part um, three, in the history, don't worry. You will take about maybe 10 minutes to take history. Oh, I will take 10 minutes in history. So when I will finish in the exam, it's normal. In the start, until you will... Uh, practice much, the history should be within three to four minutes. If you will take more than this, usually you will not finish the task in the exam. So in the start, if you will take 10 minutes in the history, don't worry, just practice, practice, practice. Organize the main points, and after this, you will be quick, quick, faster, and you can ask the history uh, very quick, and you can finish within three to four minutes. Applied knowledge, they will, uh, what, what you know, what you know, what, what you know mean, um, um, they will give you CTG, you can read CTG or no, you, uh, uh, what is your plan of management for bladder painful syndrome, for premenstrual so this is your knowledge, and I think about the best one now for the applied knowledge, in my opinion, the one who passed part two a uh, few days before, this is the best candidates now, why? Because with the time, part three, uh, if you will not review frequent times, with the time, the knowledge will decrease. Impossible, you will find his level like in part two now. Because part two now, read all the talk articles, green top, nice guidelines. So his all uh, information is fresh. So applied knowledge also is very important. And uh, I, I advise all who waiting for part three for a long time, try again to listen to the records of um, green top guideline and nice in the group and YouTube, because this is very refresh your knowledge. Because you have now maybe uh, some the buzz since long time, so this is sure your knowledge decrease. <laughs> Patient safety, uh, whatever the safety, as uh, you can put some um, uh, from today until the day of the exam. If you see outside the cubicle drug, certain drug, be careful. Usually the safety points will be in this drug, usually. So these drugs, um, be careful, be careful again, be careful. Be careful about the drugs, about the body mass index and the age. Body mass index, body mass index of the patient, age of the patient, age of the patient, be careful from the age of the patient and the drug. <clears throat> uh, for example, patient to you um, with hypertension, you can't prescribe for Hermes or Sheen. So this is a safety point. One patient you are going to prescribe for hermitronidazole from today, from today until the day of the exam, because usually you will forget. If you will tell the patient, I will prescribe for you a treatment called metronidazole, remember that there is here safety point about the alcohol. If you not ask her about the alcohol, ask her, because usually the safety point will be at also the metronidazole. So if you are drinking alcohol, you should stop the alcohol at least two to three days after complete the treatment. Uh, there is certain drugs she should not continue during a pregnancy. There is certain drugs she, if she will continue during a pregnancy, need monitor, like um, uh, like lithium. Certain um, we would need to check the level frequent times. Uh, certain drugs, if she is taking, you should this patient she should. Um, uh, you should do for her oral glucose tolerance test at 28 weeks, for example, like olanzibine, cases of psychosis. Uh, so you are talking about patient with mental he history, mental history problem, uh, psychosis, and olanzibine. And in the end, this patient, one of the safety points she should during antenatal care because this increases her body weight, this patient she should have oral glucose tolerance test at 28 weeks. Frequent with the practice, with the practice, it's easy. Like one patient with female genital mutilation, 
antenatal care, they're giving you a plenty of numbers of uh, numbers of the uh, investigation, but they didn't put that this patient hepatitis C down. So hepatitis C will be a safety point. Why? Because patient with female genital mutilation, you should also uh, hepatitis C not a routine for antenatal care. But in case of hepatitis, uh, uh, female genital mutilation, you should uh, request for her. So this is another safety point. Frequent points with the practice, you can remember it easily. You can remember it easily, but need much frequent with the practice. I will repeat today this. And even once I see any task, I can recognize very easily that this is a safety point in the task. Uh, one patient with, um, uh, for example, uh, sepsis and written for outside for her non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. So from today until the day of the exam, be careful from any drug outside because usually this will be a safety point. So non-steroidal should be stopped. Especially in the case of sepsis, we can prescribe for her another analgesia like paracetamol. This is a safety point. You should be concise as you can. You should practice as you can, talk as you can, listen as you can, because this is all will help you. Communication with the colleagues, uh, we mentioned, um, like you can inform thrombocytopenia, you will in, in, include the hematology doctor, you need to inform the neonatology doctor for her, the her baby also, involve the consultant, you will communicate with the theater staff and this doctor informing him. So to who you are referring, this is a communication with the colleagues, you will mention the persons you will involve with you in the management of this patient. Um, sometimes this will be a question in the exam uh, if he asks you how you are going to inform your college in the department about this patient, uh, uh, how you are going to inform the consultant, how you are going so how to inform about the patient so he will ask about uh, he wants the answer of Spartool. Spartool, you will, you will talk about any patient, you will tell the situation of this patient now, what is the background of the patient, sorry for the spelling, it's background, background assessment and recommendation. Um, um, uh, this is um, uh, the Spartool because this is very common questions you can face in any OSCE exam, how you are going to inform um, about this patient your consultant. Communication with the patient and families. Uh, it can be outside also one of the domain. When you are going inside the cubicle, please confirm where are you uh, that you are in the clinic, in the antenatal care clinic, you are in the gynecology clinic, you are in the ward, you are in the delivery room. So you should confirm where are you. Because if you don't know where are you, this is a problem. So not logic, she is in the ward and you will tell her, I am Dr. Muhammad, one of the doctors in the clinic. We are not in the clinic, doctor, we are in the ward. Really? Really, we are in the ward? <laughs> no one inform me. So <laughs> be careful. Be careful about uh, where are you. When? When the problem happened? Like this patient waiting you inside because she delivered six weeks before, previously, and she had shoulder dystocia. Uh, so the event happened six weeks before, not today. So you will tell her, I, I, I know that you um, had shoulder dystocia. Uh, no, today. No, not today. This is six weeks before. So confirm. Where are you? When the event happened, who is waiting you inside? Who is waiting you? Because it could be the patient. Could be the husband of the patient who is waiting you inside. Could be the daughter of the patient. Daughter of the patient or husband of the patient, or mother of the patient, so who is waiting you inside? And you will confirm her name also again, and you will tell her that you are the daughter of, and you confirming the mother name, or the wife name, or whoever uh, uh, she is related to him. So you should confirm, because this is, will be a communication, like one patient, the husband come to, Ask about uh, his wife who are in ICU. What is her situation? What happened? Why she is in ICU now? So you need to communicate. Uh, one daughter, she come to ask about the situation of her mother. So also this is another task and uh, a plenty of scenario you can face in the exam. As a communication with the patient and relatives, this is, will be either verbal by talking, talking or non-verbal. This is the body language. 
Verbal, you can practice. It's easy. It's easy with the practice. And this is, will be the first impression about you inside the cubicle. Because I now preparing myself outside the cubicle. I write the main points in the paper. I need to go inside. I need to start the task. When you start the task, you will start by greeting the patient. And this is, will be a communication. So the first impression, and usually it will be, uh, it will last. It. The first impression usually last. It. So when you are going inside, you will greet here. This is, will be the verbal communication that you are communicating with the patient. So what, what I want from you next week, you will fix your introduction. And you can use uh, no voice, really? Uh, no voice? Why? No voice? Others, please, no voice? Uh, voice clear or no? Clear, ma'am. No? Okay. Clear, the voice is clear. Okay. Okay. So now I want to, from you to prepare two papers. You will use two papers only for one week. After one week, you will tear this paper and throw. Don't depend on any paper at all. Just you will prepare, uh, use the paper later, only during the first two minutes outside the cubic. So you will practice the same at home. Same in the exam. So I will prepare my um, my introduction. Uh, so I, I mentioned the word good morning or good, good afternoon. This should not be used because uh, usually maybe you are under the stress. You can mention it in wrong way. Uh, so I like, hello, I am Dr. Gada Badran, one of the doctors in the clinic today. Can I confirm your name and age, please? So she will answer. Like uh, she will answer her name. So, uh, what you want me to prefer? What what you prefer me to address you? Uh, you ask this question for the patient age 18 years or more. If she is less than age, this age, no need to ask her about what she wants to be addressed. No need for this question. You can ask call her by her name, but be careful. If you ask this question. And she tell you, for example, call me Mrs. Uh, Mrs. For example, any name. You will use the name she choose for herself through the task. My advice, my advice, try after confirming her name, don't call her during the exam. Why? Because you have uh, frequent names of the role players. And especially for the overseas, it will be difficult to remember all the names. And the difficult what, what she choose for herself to be addressed. So try to avoid calling her. And don't call her dear. Some they are calling dear. This is not good practice. Avoid just to tell, talk to, because in the exam, you in daily life you can talk to the patient and call her name, but avoid this one because it will be a big problem if you call her by different name. It will be a big problem for you. You're calling another patient. Sure, it will affect your mark in the communication. Uh, then you will tell her, um, I understand today that you referred from your GP doctor because you have. So this is the aim of the consultation. This is correct. She will tell you, yes, this is correct to doctor. Ask her, ask, let her talk. What is your expectation and the concern from today's consultation? Uh, some they will tell, but she already, uh, we know already that she come for controlled diabetes. No, just let her talk. This is a referral. But let her talk. Maybe she has any other concern she wants to discuss. Let her talk. After this, you will tell her, OK, before coming to your concern, I need to ask you a couple of questions. At any point, if you find yourself, you want to ask any question, please don't hesitate to ask me. And after this, you will start your history. So your next week, especially for who started to prepare for part three, you need to prepare two points. Your introduction, and you can use in all the cubicle for the stimulated vision task, because if you will use different introduction, this is, can make you confused under uh, stress of the exam. After this, you organize your history, start presenting the history. Your history should be organized. You should be concise. Use relevant data. Try to start with open questions. After this, you can use uh, closed questions. Um, during the uh, communication, you can draw. And the best way to practice, you can practice with your uh, patient in the clinic. In the clinic. In your daily life, all of you, you have clinics. You can use the clinics also for preparation for the exam. You will use the same idea. Same idea. Uh, 
especially if you will do something for the first time in the exam, it will appear also that this is your first time. But if you are familiar with this slide, you are want to explain for her something about infertility and hysterosalpingogram and how this is will check the tubes. So you will draw for her, this is your womb, and this is the Flavian tubes, and we'll eject here. So you can draw for her. You can draw for her. Um, okay, so the patient, you can draw. Try to avoid draw in something very difficult for the patient. For example, uh, don't draw in case of cancer. Uh, don't draw for her um, in case of an encephaly. You'll tell her your baby likes this. No, some cases you can't draw. Uh, some some binds could be not. Um, uh, uh, you can avoid drawing in anything will harm the patient. Put yourself in in the patient position. You would like to hear something. It will not will not good. So avoid drawing in big bad news, especially in cases of cancer and congenital illness. For sure. I respect the patient views. This is very important. Uh, especially this is advice for who, who recently passed part two. You know the guidelines well. You know the guidelines and you know that this is the first treatment, this is the second line, this is the third line. But be careful. In part three, they want to know how you are going to deliver this information to the patient. This is the first point. And the patient, she has the right to accept this or refuse. So, for example, this is a case of you trying uh, endometrial um, uh, hyperplasia. For example, um, uh, with um, uh, with atypia, and you tell her the first line treatment uh, in your condition, a uh, case of postmenopausal bleeding, and she you tell her according to the guideline the treatment will be hysterectomy. She tell you no, no doctor. Yes, you tell her that it's the first line treatment. But you need to ask her why she refused the treatment, the management, and the counsel about the risk. But in the end, you should know that in the end, the patient will decide for herself. She will decide for herself if she agree or not. So be careful from this point. Don't think that if you know the guidelines, so I will give her this is the first line, so the patient should agree. No. The patient, she has the right to decide for herself. Uh, during the communication, uh, try to use inviting questions. And this is also need practice. With the practice, it will be easy. Uh, like um, in your condition, um, uh, from your history and after investigation, uh, you, you have a case uh, called obstetric called obstetric cholestasis. Did you hear about it before? So this is inviting a question. Yes, doctor, I hear from my friend, or, or I don't have any idea about it. So you try to use inviting questions. With the practice, it will be easy. But what in the point is when you are taking a history from any patient, use inviting questions because this is, will be also important. Uh, try to avoid jargon, but if you use any jargon during the discussion with the patient, no problem. You can apologize to her. I'm really sorry for the medical terminology, but let me explain for you more. Don't show her that you um, did something wrong. No. Just apologize and start to explain for her more. Respect the patient dignity all the time, especially if one patient refuses examination. Because when you're offering one patient uh, examination and she refuses, she you will not examine, but just you will just you will offer her by talking. If she refuses, you will reassure her the examination will respect her dignity and privacy all all the time, and there will be a chaperone there. And ask her why she is refusing examination. If she is worried it is painful, we can ask her. You can stop us if there is any pain at any point, or she is not ready. We can arrange for her another appointment. And if she's still refusing, no problem. In the end, this will be her right. Uh, patient information leaflet. This is also communication because she will read more about uh, her condition. Uh, identification of the communication barriers this is important to point in the communication and usually they will put it in the uh, structure discussion how because not logic he will give you role players uh, uh, can't speak english impossible he will, uh, impossible he will give you one patient to speak english one role player speak english but he will put in the structure discussion why to test if you will uh, discover that this is, will be a communication barrier between you and the patient because this can happen in your, your daily life. Like he will tell you, you are about to see now this patient mother of this daughter who can't speak English. 
who can't speak English. So take this mark. Don't miss it. But until now, there is some, they miss these points. If they put outside the cubicle, she can't speak English, you will write in your uh, papers, interpreter. This patient needs official interpreter because this is communication barrier. And be careful because this is very important mark and sometimes still until, until, until today, some they can miss this mark easily. Uh, you can face role players angry, angry because because um, um, you yesterday you did for her DNC and perforation of the uterus and you cut also part from her bowel and colostomy and now you are going to talk to her. So what you are expecting, what you are expecting from her, <laughs> she will be very angry. So to buzz this task, you buzz this task, you should be calm. You should calm until the end and show her, show her that you can listen to her until tomorrow. No problem. Show her, give her this impression. Give her this impression. Uh, and if her voice loud, your voice should be low. And try to talk to her by Mrs. or Mr. Mrs. Don't call her by her name at all until she calm. When you are um, calm, when you are uh, um, keeping silent when she is talking, this is very important, respecting her um, um, uh, concern. This is all will let her calm. But sometimes some candidates really affected by the role player's attitude. She is angry and he will be angry. So you will fail. We want to pass. So if she is angry, okay, I will keep calm. I will respect her uh, concern. I will apologize to her early. This is very important. Very important. Apologize early. This is very important to say the patient, I'm really sorry. Sorry, but don't tell sorry. Sometimes some candidates they will mention sorry, but they will mention it in the end. In the end, in the end, this can happen to some patient and perforation, and I call the surgeon and I'm sorry that this has happened to you. No, this is will be late. Start to apologize to the patient in the start. After this, you can explain for her what happened and how this one will affect her in the future. Okay. Um, uh, uh, try to be active listener. Active listener means that anyone will see you, that you are giving good attention, attention to the patient. You are not um, uh, absent. Some candidates, when I finish one task, um, I failed in this task. Oh, this question, I remember. I'm stupid. I'm, I remember now the answer. Why I am talking to myself while I'm in the exam? Oh, I miss this mark. So be careful, forget everything. Start any 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 task as a new task. Forget everything. So the role player can, and even the examiner can recognize that you are not there, you are absent, you are thinking anything other than the patient. Just to concentrate by your eyes, don't staring in the patient's eyes, but just to keep eye contact. Don't uh, uh, don't only look into the uh, table, to the examiner, to the wall, just to concentrate with your patient because this is very important and very vital. Don't interrupt her. In the exam, you are in hurry. You wanted to finish. And if you interrupt her in the exam, this is, will affect your communication mark because you're not respecting your patient while she's talking. So if you practice with your study partner from now until the day of the exam, if you interrupt your partner, study partner, while he is talking, you will interrupt the role player in the exam. So be careful, practice, practice. Your study partner stop to talk, you start to talk. Uh, some during the practice, no, no problem, no problem. I will interrupt my study partner and in the exam, I will be careful. No, no. If you practice in this way and you interrupt the, your study partner while you are talking, usually you will do the same in the exam, usually. Appropriate omissional response, uh, like if the patient is happy, you also face should uh, look that you are happy. If the patient said a case of cancer, uh, should be also uh, the same uh, emotional response. But be careful, sometimes um, some candidates, they can have involuntary laugh. So this can happen. Inshallah, no one will have this one. <laughs> Involuntary love. Just, you know, that this is acting and this is exam. And I, I also failed in the exam. And love, involuntary love. So be careful. This is also can affect your mark. Uh, some positions also be careful. 
don't cross your legs because some they are using this is daily life this is my habit in sitting when i'm sitting i should do like crossing my legs this is my habit yes try to avoid until you pass the exam at least uh, don't cross your uh, uh, arms in front of the patient in the exam because this is also closed position so try to avoid just to keep your hands open you the papers will be in your hands so this is will prevent this action but some they are familiar with this uh, this position so be careful this is will be a closed position so don't do this one also in the exam uh, so what i will do now i will need to search for study uh, partner because this is very important to start the preparation for the exam I need to prepare my introduction, the one I use inside the cubicle for the stimulated patient task, and I need to prepare my history. And after this, I will start to practice. Um, you need, uh, if you will sit only for the exam, three months is enough. If you don't have work, some you will not have work, so you can sit three months and you can finish. But don't delay. Not, don't, the problem now in the booking, the problem now in the booking, really. And there is waiting list uh, huge, and, it, and there is some even from 2017. And when they started to book, they can't book because uh, the booking will close within uh, minutes. So they can't book. Uh, so booking of the exam in the next year, maybe they will do more uh, more than two exams. It will solve the problem, inshallah. Uh, so try to practice from today. Don't delay because your also knowledge will decrease with the time, and this is very important. Whenever you delay the exam, your knowledge with the time will decrease. So try to uh, uh, book the exam as soon as possible. Uh, the first one to read, I will mention, and no one will follow. I know, <laughs> patient information left. This is really a golden key for uh, to pass the exam. Golden key. Why? If you will open the patient information leaflet, just you write in the Google patient information leaflet, RSOG, it will appear like this. <clears throat> and there is will be uh, frequent patient information leaflet. Some patient information leaflet, when you will open, you will find the down, just to go down, you will find that there is record. Some patient information leaflet, when you open, there is video. There is video down. Okay? So try to listen. I don't want from you to read patient information leaflet. I want from you listen to patient information leaflet. Listen to patient information leaflet. Some patient information leaflets, there is no any record. This just in um, our group, Bart Shree, the Badran uh, Telegram group, there is huge numbers of our colleagues and the friends they record. Uh, almost all the patient information leaflet. And if there is no patient information leaflet, try to record by your voice in your private channel. Try to record, and when you record, record by your voice, record only the conclusion. When you are reading a patient information, if there is much just by, you can um, circle certain but, uh, lines, lines in certain informations, lines, lines, this is the main lines, and you will start recording. Your recording should be within seven minutes. Why seven minutes? Because there is no role player. And when you will record, record only what you are going to tell the patient. For example, you will tell her, uh, we are going to do like this for you. Uh, some the recording, uh, the, um, their rule and the rule player rule, not good. Like, good morning, uh, she will tell you, good morning, doctor. I'm talking to myself. Uh, can I confirm your name? My name is, no, don't do like this. Don't take the rule of the rule player and the candidate in the same time. No, this is not a practice. Just you will record what you are going to tell to her. You can take both in between that you are listening to her for a second. And after this, you will listen to yourself. First time, you will not like yourself. Well, oh, my, my voice is not good at all. <laughs> Some of you will like their voice. Oh, I will. <laughs> my voice is very nice. So whatever you will like on your head, just to try to practice more and more in the channel. Uh, in your chain. Sometimes there is no patient information leaflet in the ARS or G site, just you can search in National Health Service, you will find also very excellent videos. You can listen also. Again, try to listen. Don't read. Try to listen as you can. Listen and talk. Listen and talk. You can even in your work, just put in your um, ears and I will listen. Listen to patient information leaflet. Try to don't depend on paper and the pen. Don't depend on the paper and the pen. 
don't forget this advice don't forget this advice because if you depend on the paper and the pen you can't recall the information easily in the exam in the patient information leaflet you can uh, know how to talk to the patient with layman like abdomen you will tell her this is um, your tummy um, uterus, uterus. Even it's a layman, woman, but uterus also they are used in the uh, in the patient information if it, because in the past, like in Arabic countries, sometimes we are talking about uterus. This is uh, in Arabic we are telling a bit well. Also, this is one because this is old term. So uterus also they are using even in the patient information if it. But if you know the layman, it will be better. So womb, cervix, neck of the womb, endometrium, lining of the womb, because the patient she will not know what is endometrium. Ovarian cyst. If you will tell the patient ovarian cyst, what is cyst to doctor? What is cyst to doctor? She don't know cyst. So this is fluid filled space in your ovary. Adhesion. This is a question. Uh, you have previous cesarean section and this could be adhesion. She will ask you what is adhesion to doctor? Scars. So be careful when you are using any medical terminology because they are clever and they will ask you what this means. Astroscopy, a telescopy to see inside your womb. Laparoscopy, this is a keyhole surgery to see inside your tummy. So if you read patient information different daily and you record it in your private channels, your level will be in the highest. But you keep at least one daily, impossible. Impossible you will fail in the exam. Impossible. If you record only one, one patient information to lift it daily and record and record beside your practice with your partner, your level will be very high. Study module-wise, this is according to what you like. For me, as a person, I don't like to study module-wise because I um, today I will write the early pregnancy, some task about early pregnancy tomorrow. This is my personality. I don't want to study something and stuck in it. This is my personality. I don't like. But if you if you like to study by module wise, this will be excellent. Like I will start early pregnancy modules, ectopic pregnancy, pregnancy of unknown location, molar pregnancy. Especially there is will uh, there is uh, new guidelines with uh, gestational trophoblastic uh, disease, and this is also change from the previous one. So please, anyone will sit even for November, try to take idea about these guidelines because there is changes, especially uh, some points uh, need to revise. Um, try to, uh, I will, uh, my study partner, I will tell him today, we will sit with each other, we will have six tasks. You prepare three, I will prepare three. For example, I will prepare graves, you will prepare and we will divide. Uh, three from you, you should also honest. So you will show also more care to your partner to practice. So don't tell, I will take the six or I will take four and you take four. No, you take one and he will take one. If I tell you, no, 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 I, I am lazy, I don't want, don't tell him no. Tell him no. You will take one and me one, and again one and one, until you finish the six. So you will practice, he will have the right to practice, and you will have the right to practice, and both of you, and be honest, don't hide any information from him. No, don't think there is some thinking that if he hides the information, he will boss. No. Maybe you are supporting your study partners. This is, will help you also to, to remember the information in the, uh, inside the cubicle in the exam easily. So also you should be more, more careful to give him the information. So Allah will help both of you to pass the exam. If you want it to be three, no problem, but be careful. If you are increasing the numbers, this is, will decrease the number uh, uh, when you are talking. So this is very important to talk. So maximum three. Uh, so the, your study partner, he will tell you forget this point and respect him. No, no, no. What is no, no? This is not important. No, it's respect his opinion and go to read this point is you know, why you missed again. Repeat it again and again. Um, do as in the exam, two minutes reading, but don't do ten minutes practice. Why between you and the study partner? Why? Because in the exam, ten minutes. Um, it will be like mm, faster. So try to practice in nine minutes because in the exam, the rule players, you will talk and they will not talk faster as you think. No, they will take uh, slowly. They will take their time, like natural, like they are in the clinic. So try to practice in nine minutes because if you practice in nine minutes, usually you will finish the task in 10 minutes in the exam. So practice in nine minutes only with your study partner. So in the exam, you can finish easily within 10 minutes. 
try to practice like in the exam. Same, don't interrupt your, uh, your partner because this is happening and you will see when you are sitting with your partner, you will interrupt each other. So this will happen in the exam and this will affect your communication mark. After this, we, you miss this point, you should be take care from this point. You should give him good feedback about his performance. Even, even you are not, but you can, even you don't have enough experience, but you can pick that he forgets the folic acid, he forgets the, the blood group, he forgets to ask about the drug allergy. And this is also, when you are giving the feedback, this is also will improve your level also. You are giving the feedback, and in the same time, this is improve your level for the exam. Uh, there is frequent box for MRCG part three. This is all available in the all groups of Telegram. And uh, there is uh, some uh, um, uh, uh, there is some uh, files from uh, about the reports. This is also in, in, in everywhere in all Facebook groups. And this is since 2018. What is what is what is the idea? The idea from the previous questions. The idea uh, uh, please, you can close your mic before you should. So the idea, hello, can you close your mic, Dr. Yoshida? Okay. Uh, so the idea from the previous questions that you will concentrate on the main, uh, like, um, frequent task came about ulcerative for example for example ulcerative colitis or graves disease uh, or post um, uh, delivery headache or, or neonatal resuscitation or mechanism of normal labor or um, uh, uh, no problem no problem mechanism of normal labor uh, any uh, frequent task so i will know that this is important mal presentation this is important a graves disease you can bring a frequent new task but just you will have idea how will be the exam. Uh, so I need to read again green top guidelines and the talk articles and um, all these materials again. No, for part three, no. Your main source now, patient information leaflet, box for MRCG, questions which uh, shared before, long time, in 2008. And if you will see some point, it's like, for example, I am not sure about the, this point. I will open the guideline and I will read this point only. Don't waste your time because if you will waste your time and read all the guidelines, again, you are wasting your time without any value. So be careful. You will read only these sources for certain informations for review. Only I wanted to review this point. So we are talking about this one, informations only. Courses, uh, short courses will improve uh, your level. Especially uh, uh, circuits, this is very important. Uh, if the still the situation same, I'm planning to do online circuits, but until now the situation not clear. Uh, online courses is important uh, because uh, you need, need guided how you are going to start. Really, this is really, especially if you are taking this a concise way. But course alone will not bust you. Any course, even the highest courses in the world, without your effort, without your practice, with your partner, you can't bust the exam. But any course, he will give you uh, the tips. Take care, this is a safety point. Take care, you will read here this point in the outside the cubicle. Take care from the body mass index. In the communication, you should do like this. In the information gathering, you should be concise, not take. So tips, tips, and you will uh, practice several scenarios, but in the end, the main effort on you. Main effort. So the study, patient information leaflet, study partner, is very important for the exam. The other point, circuits before the exam is important because you wanted to take the how three hours. You are taking this three hours continuously, three hours continuously. So you can do this one in the exam. So this will be exercise. And my impression, even when I attended the first circuit, my first circuit, uh, it was in the RCG um, uh, in UK. It was totally different from online courses. It was different from practice with my uh, study partner. It was totally different. When I'm sitting in front of the examiner and the role players, situation different, situation different. When you are facing someone and the other one observing you, 
So try to practice this one circuit, at least one circuit, at least one, at least one. If you can do more, two or three, no problem. But at least you should practice one circuit so you will see the situation when someone observing you, how this affect your performance when you are seeing the papers, much papers outside. So how you are going to read. So this is very important life circuits. And we'll see if the, the situation will be the same and the uh, a course will be, uh, circuits also will be online or not. Uh, there is nice videos, 14 videos in strategy. There is 14 videos in strategy, and there is six videos in Lisa book. Excellent, excellent videos. Uh, in Lisa book, they are giving a good performance of the candidate and not good performance with the other candidate. So to compare the performance, and there is mission to information leaflet also, RSOG sites, there is videos, nice videos. And the videos also in national uh, health service just every day if you watch only one video this is really also will improve your level uh, for the exam uh, some you will ask this question is the language will be uh, affect my mark especially i'm not a good speaker no will not affect you we want to from you the rural player understand the information you are giving it to her if she don't if she don't understand you just apologize to her that the English is not your mother language, and please, if anything not clear, just ask me to repeat. But don't use this. Don't use this sentence uh, repeated only. No. If she asks you, I don't. I don't hear. I don't understand this uh, point. And even the role player, the role players, their they are uh, uh, their language very clear. And if you not, uh, you are not sure from the information that she asked, she she mentioned you. Just ask her. Sorry, if you can repeat, please. So she will repeat again, but don't worry, the language of the role players, they're really very clear. As uh, this is the exam venue, uh, um, London, India, two places in India, the United States Emirates, Singapore, and there is, this is, was in May because this one canceled. This one canceled because of coronavirus pandemic. And uh, there is was in Hong Kong also in the previous exam. One year before was in also in Hong Kong, but now in November only in London and also for UK trainee. This one was cancelled. Um, uh, the candidates fail in the exam. Why? Be careful. Be careful from this information. And this is not a good information, but you should know from now. Part three, only four trials. Four, four. And unfortunately, some already, they failed four, four times. So be careful, be careful. Four times and after four times, you need again to take part two exam. So how much it will be difficult? It's really very difficult, very, very difficult. So why candidates fail in the exam, fail in the, failed in the exam before? Because you are not prepared well, not prepared. You are um, busy with their families. You are busy in work, stress at work, problems at work. Um, this is affect their uh, 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 preparation for the exam. So you should prepare well. Don't apply for the exam except you are really uh, well prepared. If you are not prepared, don't waste one trial. Don't waste one trial because uh, really uh, this is uh, will be a big problem for you. Uh, stress, also some excellent candidates in the day of the exam because of the stress, they fear that they will fail. This stress also can affect their performance. Overthinking is that you have very, very simple scenario, very simple scenario, but you are putting more, no, no, you will put more complicated scenario. No, why is you will put more complicated scenario? And you are searching what will happen if you will put this complicated scenario. Just solve this scenario. Don't, don't put more complication for yourself. Try to be simple. Try to be simple as you can. Some candidates fail in the, fail in the exam because they can't read outside the instruction fast. They are slow. And they, uh, if you are slow and you are reading outside, you can't recognize what is the diagnosis, what is the plan. You, you, can't, you didn't prepare yourself, so how you will pass in the exam? Uh, some candidates fail because they can't finish the task within 10 minutes. They are talking slowly, slowly. Patient history about seven minutes started to give plan, time finish. Uh, I can, I, but I know the answer. I know if you give me three minutes more, I will, I will tell you everything. I know everything. But there is no extra time in the exam. It's only 10 minutes inside. 
Um, some they are concentrating only in the knowledge, knowledge part. They are not um, uh, practice uh, more about how they will communicate well with the patient. So only applied knowledge. You know everything about the uh, 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 presenting history, uh, like uh, investigation, treat, just to concentrate on the applied knowledge and other domains they can't cover probably also they will fail. Uh, much materials, be careful. Much materials, this is if you ask some of, uh, uh, from who failed before in the exam, they will tell we will have huge materials in this group in Telegram, in this group in Facebook, I'm collecting files from here, files from here, files from here, and in the end you lost, lost. So if you have only one book, and the patient information left it, it will be better. And when you finish, start another new book. Not logic, I will collect this one and this one and this one. What you study, nothing, nothing. So when you finish something, just start another one. Uh, sometimes in the exam, repetition of the information also. You are telling the patient certain information, again you repeat it. So the examiner will mark you two times. You mention certain point, again you repeat it again. The role player give you one information and you don't listen to her carefully and again you ask her about this information and she just mentioned to you, she just mentioned to you, I just tell you doctor. So all this repetition, waste your time without any value and also affect your mark. Some they failed in the exam because of the first task. Especially if it is odd station. Odd station, very difficult, very difficult. Very difficult. I, I can't, I, I don't know anything about this task. And this is my first task. So I failed in the exam. No. If you think in this way, just for example, for example, I take zero in this task. Zero. No problem. Still, I have 13. 13. I can also get the highest mark in 13. And also, I can pass the exam. So in each task, forget, forget the previous one. Don't think anything. Don't think what is what is good or not good. Oh, I, my performance was very excellent. No, don't think even it's excellent or not good. Don't think. Don't think about the previous. Just think about the new one. This is new. This is the first. Again, this is the first. Every task first for you. Fight until the end. Because one mark only can make you pass the exam, and one mark can make you fail. One mark is very important in the exam. Remember this one. Well. So fight until the last second in the exam. This is the practice in nine minutes. We talk about this point. Uh, we are um, we are talking about this uh, performance. Sometimes you can uh, your performance can be affected on in two stations, two tasks. Maximum three if you are taking the highest mark in the other cubicle. So don't forget, don't, don't, I think about how much task I will, my performance uh, uh, will be affected. But if you ask uh, who buzzed before, usually they will be affected in two, two stations or three maximum. But in the end, this is depend on how much mark you, uh, you take in the other task. So don't think about how much I just wait the result. Just wait the result. Don't think I my performance was not good in frequent. No, just wait the result because maybe you take highest mark in the other task, and this is also can help you to pass the exam. A linked task to have an idea. What about linked task? Like for example, for example, you are having one patient um, uh, stimulated patient task um, uh, about recurrent miscarriage. So the role player is waiting you inside. She wants to know why she has recurrent miscarriage. So you are talking to her history. What is your problem? So in the end, she is a case of recurrent miscarriage first trimester. So the plan for her will be uh, investigation for the first trimester, ultrasound, antiphospholipid antibodies. Um, uh, what is the third one? Uh, karyotyping of the product of the conception and if it is abnormal karyotyping for the parents. After you finish this one, the next task, the next task after this one, there is a structure exam examiner inside. He is waiting you inside. He tell this patient now with recurrent miscarriage, she is now pregnant and she is diagnosed with recurrent miscarriage because of antiphospholipid antibodies. And now tell me what will be the management. So this is linked station. Link task, the first one recurrent, and this one continue uh, uh, her pregnancy. So this can be a early pregnancy with you, and this one will cover maternal medicine patient antenatal care. She is now pregnant. Tell me what will be the management. 
So you should put a plan. You should be put a plan. So in outside, there will be a huge numbers of papers. History, examination. They can put antenatal care cards. They can put a gross chart. And you should be familiar with the gross chart, how you read. This is IUGR. This is macrosomic. This is normal gross. You should be familiar. No time there to understand what is this. Just you will see this is gross chart. This is macrosomic. This is normal. Just a spot. No time there to waste. What chart is he going to give you vitals? And be careful what is the problem. She's hypotensive, she's tachycardia, she's feverish. You should be familiar with all these types of uh, information there. You have only two minutes. In these two minutes, you need to read. You need to read all the paper. Try to be faster. Write, read the conclusion inside. You should put main points. You should uh, mention to the patient inside. And this is need practice. In the paper, you need to write what is the main point is you need to inform inside like blood group, like folic acid, like ultrasound for this patient or whatever, uh, MRV, whatever the scenario. So main point is you need to remember what will be the plan. And before you start, you need to prepare yourself. Now I read everything I know. Now I'm going inside. I need to prepare myself how I'm going inside and I will greet the patient because this is very important because this will be the fairest impression about you. This is what we are telling, prepare two papers, papers for the introduction and the paper for the history from today. You have one week, you can prepare your introduction, as I mentioned, and your history. This is just um, a summary for the history. You organize as you want, but start by, with the presenting history. Start by presenting history. Presenting history, obstetric history. If the gynecology case, start by gynecology history, then obstetric. If obstetric case, start by obstetric history, then gynecology history. Medical. Surgery, drug, drug allergy, cervical smear. Sometimes uh, some informations will not be relevant in the task. And this is also we need practice. When we are practice, take care. This is not relevant in this scenario. This is not relevant in this scenario. Uh, social history. So when you are organized your history, you should fix it by number one, two, three, four. I will practice for one week. Now I fix my history. The first one, I will ask what second one, third one. So why? To avoid repetition of the information. In the start, you can take first uh, about uh, 10, 10 minutes in the history, no problem. But when, the, when you will reach to the highest level, you will take about um, three to four minutes. Uh, we need one from just I will I prepare one pass uh, for who attended the who passed in part two uh, recently. I want one volunteer, one volunteer who passed part two recently. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. It's easy. Don't worry. It's easy task. I can chair. I was the doctor just two days before. Who will chair? Who is the brave heart? Can <laughs> no. Yeah, can, can I? Dr. Asima? Dr. Asima? Yeah. When yeah. You was, when you was, when you was Dr. Asima? I passed uh, recently. Just two days uh, back. Okay. Just I will uh, I will open, but be careful. You have only just just a minute. I will bring the timer. Just a minute. <laughs> uh, remember, you have now paper and pen, correct, in your hand. Now, um, one second. Okay, prepare paper and pen. I'll just take a pen. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now I will start to open the slides. You have been two minutes from the start of the time. Once I move, okay, you will see all the slides. I can return it back for you. Only two minutes. I will start now. No, I. Hello. Yes. What? Uh, I mean, I mean, what, what, what should, what do I need to do? What I'm supposed to do? Okay, you will read the task now. You have the paper okay. and the pen with you. When okay. I will start to move the slides, you need to read fast. The okay. all the data given to you. You will put a plan. What is this a case? This is a case of what? What is the diagnosis? And okay. what should be the plan for this patient? 
you will go, you will talk after this. I will start the 10 minutes. In the 10 minutes, you will start greeting me and then introducing yourself. In with the consultation, then you will take history and you will do the plan of management for me. No problem. If you did it in wrong way, all don't yeah. worry, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Easy? Easy now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we can start? Yes, please. Okay, I will start. You have only two minutes now. Okay, after the two minutes, you will have 10 minutes. So two minutes now, start. Okay. Inside the cubicle, after you read outside, you will go, all the papers will be there on the table in front of you. So don't worry. The papers of the past, outside the cubicle, on the wall, you will find it in front of you, on the table, in front of the examiner and the role player. You can read if you want, if you have time, but usually there is no time to read again. But you can execute that in the start, that you can't finish outside the cubicle, and you need again to take one minute more and you can read again but it's better to finish before you, you are going inside you wanted to return to any slides yeah the previous one couldn't copy couldn't actually see all the information. Time finish. You have to go inside. The examiner is waiting you and the rule player. Ten minutes start. Okay, um, good morning, um, Mrs. Lara Jones. Um, I'm, the, I'm Dr. Asima, uh, your uh, doctor in clinic today. And uh, uh, how would you like me to call you? Uh, you can call me Sarah. Uh, okay, I I understood from your uh, uh, um, doctor. I can hear you, doctor. Um, um, I um, I understood um uh, that I. Uh, you are pregnant uh, uh, for the, um, you have come for, for the bleeding, mild bleeding. Uh, no, I can't. I mean, uh, because the history is already given, uh, do I need to tell her that you have been referred by GP or I have to just tell her that you have come here or uh, may I know uh, your um, purpose of visit today? Because I'm just doing it for the first time. You are talking to who, doctor? Me and you only in the here. You are talking to who? I am. I, I am pregnant now six weeks. I I started to complain many vaginal bleeding and my lower abdominal pain. Okay. Um. Uh, I would like to ask you a few more questions, uh, if you don't mind. Yes, um, doctor. No problem. Um, this uh, bleeding started. Uh, when did this bleeding started? Uh, this is start on uh, just a few days before. And 
there is a pain also uh, with this bleeding is it increasing or is it is same or it is decreasing it's the same doctor mild pain mild pain okay uh, do you have any other um, issues in any, any other concerns other than the bleeding uh, and pain no doctor i just want to, i wanted to know why i have bleeding and what is the result okay as you have already uh, this uh, ultrasound has been done um scan report which is showing uh, that uh, the actually the um, there's there's no uh, fetus inside your uh, inside your womb it's an empty uh, cavity inside uh, and um, so um i'm not pregnant no i can't <clears throat> Um, no, we have to, uh, yes, yes, you are pregnant, but we cannot mm -hmm. confirm your pregnancy inside your uh, womb. So we may have to repeat your. Um, it, it is this uh, type of um, this this is known as uh, pregnancy of unknown location we can, where we cannot detect uh, um, where we cannot detect uh, the site of the pregnancy okay. and uh, we may have to we may have to repeat your uh, blood tests after when? 48 hours okay. after 48 what? hours what type of blood test to doctor it is it is for again for that uh, pregnancy test so that we will confirm whether the whether uh, this pregnancy is going to be a normal pregnancy or we may have to um, uh, find out if there is something wrong with the pregnancy sometimes the pregnancy may lie outside the uterus outside the uh, your womb and that we have to find out as of now we cannot confirm whether it is inside the womb or not okay anything more in the scan doctor yes there is a small fluid filled uh, um, mm -hmm. um, um no this uh this is uh, not of much concern as of now this uh, cyst is a fluid fluid cavity inside on the right on the right side of your ovary so okay. uh, any problem, any problem this, this? no this should not be a problem for you okay and What is the plan? So, doctor, you tell me I, I need to come again. No need, doctor, to come again. I, I don't want this pregnancy. Doctor, okay. mm. if, if you can give me tablet, doctor, I don't want to continue this pregnancy. So, uh, but we have to confirm whether this, since you have a mild bleeding and abdominal pain, we have to confirm whether it is an um it's a pregnancy which is inside the uh, womb which, it, which is a normal pregnancy or not and after confirming that um we can give you um and treatment medicines for um termination of your pregnancy so you can't give me now since this is your second pregnancy and can you just tell me about your previous pregnancy? What happened to that? This was unplanned pregnancy, and also I requested to give me some tablet, and they gave me tablet, and I aborted the baby also. So, if you can help me, doctor.
Term, uh, termination uh, for low risk patients can be uh, done uh, without a scan. No? I mean, this is quite difficult. So why, doctor? If it is difficult to doctor, why difficult to doctor? I'm really worried now. <laughs> this is quite difficult for me. Okay, so 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 you can give me tablet, doctor. No, I think we can give give you tablets because you don't have any other um, uh, risk factors. But you tell me it could be in the tubes. So what what is so the plan, doctor? Pregnancy. No, we have to confirm. This is six okay. weeks pregnancy. Actually, we have to confirm whether it is inside or not. So we cannot give you the uh, treatment for terminating your pregnancy without confirming whether it is inside or not. Okay, so I, you admit me to the hospital or no? Uh, I, uh, no, since uh, you don't need to get admitted, since all your vitals are, are, are normal and you don't have much bleeding and pain, but I, I would advise you if there is any um, anything abnormal, like if there is any increase in the uh, bleeding or pain, in that abdomen, they will give you a 24 hour uh, contact numbers. You can contact on, on that and um, the Thank further you. management can be done according to the situation then. Okay. So, anything in, uh, more I should know, doctor? Yes, uh, since this pregnancy. Uh, pregnancy has not been uh, confirmed that it is a normal pregnancy. I would advise you to um, keep somebody. Somebody should be around with you so that so sometimes there is a chance that this pregnancy is not inside the uterus and it is outside the uterus. And there is a chance that it outside the uterus it can be in the tube or, or somewhere else. But, and there is a chance that the tube can rupture and it can lead to bleeding. That can be, um, uh, I mean, that can be more uh, dangerous for you. So, um, and uh, somebody should be around with you to take care of you in case there's an emergency. Uh, okay, that's fine, doctor. Okay, so we need to repeat the test after 48 hours. Time finish. Okay. Uh, this is just a scenario. Thank you, Dr. Asima. Really nice uh, start. Don't worry. Uh, the point, <laughs> um, I wanted to show you how it will be. Just, just, just mm -hmm. this is a scenario to practice how it will be. The exam. Just uh, mm -hmm. frequent papers. This paper will be one paper alone. Uh, other papers, this will be two papers in the exam, will not be one paper, so be careful. It will be one paper and one paper, so you will have four papers, okay? So be careful. So this is one paper of the patient examination and another paper is ultrasound scans and the blood test, okay? You need to read fast, what is the case? This is, um, this is patient, what is her name? What is the domain? Information gathering. Patient safety, applied knowledge, communication with the patient. This is the domains. I will look what is the patient. This is a case of pregnancy of unknown location. What is the ultrasound? There is cyst and there is nothing inside and uh, patient vitals stable. Uh, investigation, HCG 1000, about 1000 and other hemoglobin stable, uh, plated to normal. So just quick, quick. What I need to write in the paper? In this task, Dr. Asima, tell me what is the point you write in the papers? I need when I'm outside, I need to write. Tell me now you are in front of the physical for the first time. Start with 30 minutes again. Now we are reading the task. Yeah, what you write in the paper? Tell me, patient's name, age. No, she will, she will tell you inside. Don't waste your time in this. Uh, mm -hmm. Can I confirm your name and the age and try to avoid calling her? This is my opinion. Uh, under the stress of the exam, you can't call all the patients. So this is not a, a vital point. 
What is the, tell me only the words you will write in the paper in the two minutes. Okay, I wrote about the uh, history of uh, mild bleeding PV and mild abdominal pain. And uh, will, she's unraveled at two. I will not write the information they given to me. I will not write the information they given to me. I wanted to write what is the point is I need to mention inside. You get okay. the idea. Just okay. I want to come you to, to write in the papers outside. This is very important to point. I want to, from you to write the words you will remember inside. I don't want to, from you to copy paste the information in front of you, in front of the cubicle. Be careful. This is very important. So this is pregnancy of unknown location. Bleeding in early pregnancy. As any patient in your daily life, if this patient come in the clinic, any key words I should remember for this scenario? Patient, early pregnancy, I need to ask her something like, for example, she is taking folic acid. For example, we can ask her about folic acid or no? No. We can ask not why? Why no? Why, why not required? Because we don't we trust the patient. Mm -hmm. she didn't. We are giving folic acid three months before pregnancy. Not confirmed. We are not waiting until the pregnancy confirmed. We need to give folic acid before start the pregnancy three months. And we still mm -hmm. don't know that the patient she is willing to do abortion. She is not requesting. Still, we don't know. She requests inside the cubicle. So we need to ask in the history if she started to take folic acid or no. As a general, as a general, this patient bleeding early pregnancy, anything you needed to ask, blood group, her blood group important or no? This patient yes. could be ectopic. Could be ectopic? Yes. yes. Could later? Blood group is, could need blood transfusion later? Blood group is important yes. or no? Blood group, any, any early pregnancy, early pregnancy, what it as a rule? In the history, you need to ask folic acid in the blood group. Any patient early pregnancy. In your history, in your history, when we started to take history, actually, there is here small domain about information gathering. If you look up Dr. Asma, information gathering is requested up, correct? What you talk about the history? I tell uh, you tell me, can I ask you some questions? I tell, okay, no problem. You ask about two questions, one question is about breathing and one question is about when, and it was closed questions. And okay. we tell in the communication, you can start by open question. And you tell me more about your complaint. This is open question. She will tell you. But if you ask a certain question closed, this is not good start. This is will be a closed question. Start by open question. And you didn't complain the history. The history. You get the idea, Dr. Hassan. What is the history? Uh, other history. Other history. Nothing. If you if you listen to the report again, there is no history. So the examiner can't give you too much. Uh, no, any presenting just uh, not not much involved in it. Uh, obstetric history not taken. If you take obstetric history, she will you she has in in unplanned pregnancy before. You didn't talk gynecology history, a drug, a drug allergy. If she is taking folic acid before or no, what is her blood group? And she tell you, doctor, if it, I am. I, this is, I don't want to continue pregnancy. Are you mm. asking me about the previous pregnancy? I, I don't want to also continue. I they give me tablet. So any question here important? One patient Why do you, What? Why do you want to? Uh, what is the reason for the Why? 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 Every time? Why? Why? Every time she wanted to. Uh, everything is stable at home. Maybe she's a case of domestic abuse. Asking her, uh, everything is going well mm -hmm. at home. Why, why, what is the reason? What is the reason? Uh, sometimes she don't want to scroll. This is something maybe in the last, in the previous one, but we need to ask her if this is someone pressure on her, like in domestic abuse, why she is requesting the abortion every time. And if one patient requesting the abortion, this is any OSCE exam, be careful from this one, even for who are preparing for MRCBI. Anyone uh, today come to the clinic and requesting, requesting, Abortion. What is the main point? Is we will not give an information to the examiner, to the patient. The examiner will listen to me and to the patient. I want abortion. I request abortion. Interception. 
Excuse me, excuse me, doctor. There is a distortion in the voice. If somebody has opened his mic, all the mics should be closed. Your voice is not clear. Okay, close your mic, Dr. Asima, maybe from your side. Okay, now it's not clear. Okay, so the point, I'm just just to uh, talking again. Some point is this is need art, remembering easily. One patient, early pregnancy, bleeding, folic acid in the history, blood group, uh, RH negative or no, risk factors uh, of, of ectopic pregnancy, like sexually transmitted infection. This patient, uh, inside the cubicle, anyone request abortion? Ask her why, exclude domestic abuse, and in the second point, you will tell her after we confirm your pregnancy where, and we are respecting, we are sure we are respecting her wishes if she wanted to do abortion. But after she will do abortion later, this patient should have effective contraception because not logic, because this affects the patient's safety. Not every time she will come pregnant and she will request something. One time she will have ectopic or she will. Uh, uh, will have bleeding, so effective contraception also is important. Boy. So the point here, your history was just a few in what? So this is, can also affect your mark in the information gathering. Try to organize your history because you need to take full history within three to four minutes. Presenting history, obstetric history. Uh, even in the start, when you are starting to introduce yourself, you, you start by greeting her, don't hesitate. Talk to her like you are in the clinic. Don't talk to yourself or I oh, I don't know what I should do. No. If you are seeing your patient in your daily life, you will not do like this. You will try to give uh, information to the patient. So act like you are in your clinic, not in the exam, or you are not practicing in the course, like this patient with you in the clinic. Similar, you can deal with the patient in easy way. Don't tell, I, I don't know what I should I should. This is happening, not from Dr. Asim. This is happening from, in the from frequent courses, same. You will tell what I should do. No, tell as you are talking to the baby. Uh, no, I mean, I mean, Dr. Gada here, like suppose, uh, like this uh, for this patient, we have already this information that she is pregnant six weeks, she has bleeding PV, and uh, so how should we start the, uh, the conversation? I mean, I was confused whether I have to tell her no, that uh, I know that you're pregnant or. Yes, this is you, first you greet her. This is was excellent. You tell her I am doctor. Uh, you need to ask her, can I confirm your name and age? Your name and age, okay? Because you are asking, and uh, after this you ask her what she wanted to address her. Then you will tell the aim of the consultation. You have data in front of you. I understand that you come today, that you are pregnant six weeks, and you complaining of minimal vaginal bleeding and mild uh, uh, lower abdominal pain. Is this correct? She will tell yes. The aim of the consultation. After this, do you have any more concern you wanted to discuss with me today? She will tell I want also to know the result. Okay, the result uh, uh, with you. The result, Dr. Asima, you have result, you have blood test, and you have ultrasound, you will inform the result to the patient. Because already she did, she, you can't tell her, uh, we don't know the, no, you will tell what is in the result. You can draw. If you, if it is easy for you, you will tell her this is your womb. The scan shows this is your womb. We can't see the pregnancy here inside your womb. Uh, or sometimes it can be because it's still uh, very small. We can't see, so it can be also growing in the tube. So we can't confirm. It will be early to confirm. This is called the pregnancy of unknown location. And this is very important point to tell her what is the diagnosis. This is pregnancy of unknown location. You mentioned this point, but you didn't mention here about the blood test. You tell her this is a blood test. Pregnancy hormones. You tell her we will repeat the blood test. Which blood test? She uh, do CBC. She do, what's the blood? She try to be specific. You tell her this is a pregnancy hormone. This is today 1,000 like uh, 50, and we need to repeat again after 48 hours because still we don't know where is the site of the pregnancy. In the in the picture, you draw the picture in the paper, so it can be here inside your womb. It can be here inside, so we can't decide where is the pregnancy. Should tell why, doctor? You are. I don't want to wait. Just to give me tablet. First, you will ask why she is requesting abortion. 
Second point, you will tell her that we are respecting your wishes, but at, at this point, we can't give you a tablet because we don't confirm where is the site of the pregnancy. Tablet can help to, you to have abortion if this is inside your womb, but now we can't confirm with, where is the site because if the pregnancy outside your womb, this is we need another treatment, which in, include injection called chemotherapy, or even sometimes we can need keyhole surgery. So the tablet will not work at this point. So now we are respecting the patient wishes. We now tell her we can't give you in simple way, not uh, not attacking the patient. We are respecting her wishes regarding this abortion, but we will touch the point of contraception, especially if this patient she is uh, requesting abortion frequent type. So contraception here is very vital safety point for the patient because not every time she will come to us. So in, uh, fix your introduction, greeting your patient, confirming her name and age, what she wanted to be addressed, aim of the consultation, expectation and the concern, uh, try to organize your history, try to start with open question, presenting history, pediatric history, gynecology history, medical, surgical, uh, drug, drug allergy, all the uh, 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 history should be organized. After this, you will explain for her the result. The result, the blood test show like this, ultrasound scan show like this, the plan for you for repeating after 48 hours. And remember well, the point of blood group, blood group, we are asking here the blood group because it was not requested. They are putting the blood test outside, and one of the blood tests should be requested at this point also still, because this patient could be a case of ectopic pregnancy. We don't know still the situation. So blood group should be requested to have ID regarding the patient. Uh, blood group or not. Um, in the end, don't, don't be silent. Uh, uh, you know, when you tell me, this is pregnancy of unknown location. This is very excellent to point to asking, inviting you questions. Did you hear about it before? This is excellent area. You can put here inviting you questions. This is will um, improve your communication skills. So once you reach about the diagnosis, uh, this is a pregnancy of unknown locations, this is ectopic pregnancy, this is smaller pregnancy. So did you hear about it before? So when you are using inviting questions also, this is will improve uh, your communication skill with the patient. Uh, respect the patient's wishes, this is very important. And in the end, you should provide her patient information leaflet she can read. It's safe to me to go home. Yes, it's safe. Her vital signs, examination, all normal. But we need to instruct her. She will come after 48 hours appointment, but we need to instruct her to come back in case uh, this is the flag sign. If pain increase, if there is severe bleeding, if severe pain, if she is started to be drowsy, she will come immediately. This is a very important safety point, and you cover it when you tell you need to come at any time uh, if there is any increasing in the pain and the bleeding. Uh, try to draw. Uh, try to ask the patient if she asks something like why. If she requesting certain things, try to remember the question. I mentioned in the start, usually you will forget this question. Try to inform the patient about her result because this is her rights. Try to organize your information gathering. Still, you have time. This is good start, Dr. Asima. Don't worry. This is good start. So if we are summarize this scenario again, you need again to read fast. You need again to put a plan for this patient. This is pregnancy of unknown location. We don't know this patient should use folic acid. Later, she tell I don't want to continue the pregnancy. This is another thing. But in pregnancy of uh, a bleeding in early pregnancy, you should ask about folic acid, ask about the blood group of the patient, ask organized history about the patient and risk factors for ectopic pregnancy, like sexual transmitted infection. Ask about domestic abuse because this patient, you will ask her if everything is going well at home because she requesting two times abortion. You will ask her about contraception, why she is trying, not trying for effective contraception to avoid pregnancy every time. The plan for her would be repeating HCG after uh, a blood test, pregnancy blood test after 48 hours to check uh, because this is could help us uh, to identify this is could be in pregnancy inside your womb or outside your womb and about the uh, uh, tablet she is requesting for abortion at this point it will be early to prescribe for you because still we don't know confirmation about the pregnancy where is the pregnancy but we are respecting your wishes at the point we reach where is the pregnancy at this point we can discuss regarding this abortion because we are respecting your wishes uh, in the end the patient information different appointment two days and she will come back the little bit after uh, if she is complaining increasing the pain or uh, uh, thank you dr asema this is just uh, need every day and uh, every day you need you. to practice different scenarios from the uh, you can find much, much scenarios in the box 
frequent scenarios you can practice with your bar if you take every day if you start by four four tasks per day this is will help you much yes who is talking hello hello dr gada hey, dr shushmita here uh, i just wanted to know uh, while writing uh, before the hall i mean the key notes you said just after reading this two minutes uh, within the two minutes uh, apart from this folic acid and blood group what should and the diagnosis what should i write in the paper Oh, okay. Uh, for me, is it, is it, if this is scenario in front of me now, I will write this patient bleeding early pregnancy. I will ask about folic acid. I will ask about blood group. I will write BUL. So this is a pregnancy of unknown location. I will I write 48 hours. So this is, means the plan. It will be after 40 hours because there is no much time outside to work. I will write also. Uh, but, but the contraception, re, be, be careful. The contraception you can use in the usual general the history inside the cubicle, but you can't write outside in this case because the patient to disclose only uh, regarding her wishes about uh, abortion inside the cubicle. There is request of the abortion was inside. So you can't write this contraception outside, but the patient suddenly in the cubicle, she tell you, I don't want to continue the pregnancy. So put it as a rule. Don't don't worry. Put it any OSCE exam, any patient request for abortion, mainly ask her why she is requesting. Exclude that this is a case of domestic abuse. Second point, over uh, long act lark, over over lark, long acting contraception. Why? Because this patient, this is will be affect her safety if if she come frequent times with uh, pregnancy and she request abortion. This will affect her safety. So make it as a rule. Request abortion. Why? Exclude domestic abuse. And uh, after this, offer contraception. I mean, what yeah. about the other information that uh, which is written there? I mean, uh, like the uh, what is her HCG, like one zero five zero something like that. Do do I need to write those also, or I have to remember them? No, like I will the, tell you. This is an excellent question. Yeah. This is an excellent question. I I remember it's one thousand, but I don't know it's fifty or fifty two or fifty three. When you are yes, going yes. and sitting, when you are sitting on the chair. The, role, the table in front of you, these papers will be fixed in the table, like this. You see this uh, chair? You see this chair, for example? Yes. This is more in Cairo. When you are sitting here, the papers here, it will be the same, this one on the wall outside. So you can have a look, but be careful. Don't leave the patient and you are your eyes only in the paper. I can see the ultrasound. Don't do like this. Just have a look for a second, for a second. That the HCG is 1,000, so the pregnancy hormones show that it is about 1,050, and we need to repeat it. So you have the numbers in front of your eyes on the table. The ultrasound scan is there on the table. So if you want to have a look for a second, don't some they are leaving the patient and they just putting their eyes. This is will affect your communication mark because this will affect the eye contact. You get the idea. So the papers is there. So you should be clever when you look. Have a look for a second. For a second, even if it is better, if the role player uh, don't know that you look to the paper, you get the idea, like you are moving your eyes, you, you get the idea. She, do, she don't know that you even look, but the paper is there. The paper is outside the cubicle, it's there in front of you, inside the cubicle on the table. If you wanted to have a, a look, you can look, okay? Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any more questions? Dr. Agata. Yes. Hello, Dr. Agata. How are you? How are you, doctor? What is your name? Intasar, ma'am. Yes, Dr. Intasar. Welcome. I'm yes. from Cairo, too, ma'am. I'm proud you are Egyptian, too, ma'am. Thank you. I, I wonder if you you will uh, going to uh, arrange a life circuit in uh, Cairo? And according um, to the uh, the new uh, the new suspected or the new attempted uh, life circuit through the uh, digital one. Yes, uh, we just waiting is a November exam, and if the situation continue, because I'm planning to do life circuit in uh, Dubai and Cairo. But if it is not solved right now, I have only online courses. But I will think regarding the life as an online circuit if the situation continue in the same. 
بيكوز ناو ذا اكزام نوفمبر اكزام ويل بي اونلي ذا كانديديت ويل سيتنج ان فرونت ذا مونيتور اند اول ذا تاسك ويل موف ان فرونت هيم سو اف ذا سيتويشن كونتينيو ان ذا سيم ذا اكزام ويل بي سيميلر ان 2021 ان ذا سيم واي سو وي شود ارينج ان شاء الله وي ار وركينج تو دو سيركتس اون لاين اوكي مام ثانك يو فيري ماتش ثانك يو دكتور انتصار اني مور كويشنز Okay, I am with you. In the Hello. You have any new questions? No problem. You can post whatever you want in the. And uh, Hello, I have a question. Me. I have a question, doctor. Yes, doctor. Um, uh, in the paper provided, in the paper provided, uh, there was written that medical and surgical history is unremarkable. So uh, uh, we should, uh, when we um, gathering information. Uh, so we should again uh, elaborate it or we just uh, uh, focus on other uh, points which is not mentioned in the paper okay this is excellent question this is really excellent question who attended the exam before knows the situation it's really difficult to two minutes to read the papers and the put a plan for the patient and put this one in the papers and prepare yourself to go inside. Two minutes. Yeah, this is two minutes. Remember two minutes, including uh, in the previous circuits when you are moving from one cubicle to cubicle. So it's a little difficult. If you have 14 tasks to know what is the information given and what is the information not given, really impossible. Impossible for the history, especially for the history. So the idea what? The idea? Fix one scenario for the history, but history should be relevant, and this is will come with the practice. Don't worry. But fix your history because I'm really worried because even some excellent, excellent candidates they can't see very relevant paper, paper, <laughs> paper. You can imagine not not informations. One complete histopathology missed, missed because uh, uh, time is short. So you wanted to believe that you will remember that he gave you medical. If something irrelevant, you can remember easily. But something irrelevant, you can't remember if he gave you or not. So just to fix your history, because this is will make you more confident. Confident. You ask and will not take from you maybe a few seconds. Okay. If you ask about it, otherwise you are fit and well. Finish. No doctor, I don't have any problem. So you finish the medical history, few seconds, and the surgery same. So. So don't don't think that you will remember what is the information you need to remove from the history. Impossible. Impossible. Okay. Any any questions? Any more questions? Uh, any more questions? Lost in the group. Okay. <laughs> I will escape. Thank you for all of you, and um, uh, I am with you. If you wanted to ask, clarify any questions, I am with you in um, Gada Badran group. Uh, YouTube, it's a very excellent point. If you can uh, revise also the guidelines again, I posted in YouTube channel about eight sessions. Really will help you much regarding the revise the guidelines. Also, there is much record this regarding patient information leaflet and all OST boxes there also in the groups. You can also have a look Gada Badran Part uh, Three Telegram group and Facebook group. And the same is uh, for all of you. And goodbye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.